What's up? It's Johnny Shreve here. Today we're at Fenton um, Powerhouse Gym. I'm currently five foot seven. I've been five foot seven since eighteen. <laughs> Winning uh, nationals last year, and what the experience was like for you? Buddy. Nationals was uh, the coolest thing as uh, I've ever experienced. Um, I've been chasing being a professional athlete my whole life, and uh, that was my second chance after playing football. So the five-year journey, um, I've been top three in Canada for five years. The only one, um, one year, my first year was actually uh, top 10. And uh, I got close every year, and you know, I've always been aiming to get that uh, pro card. And the year that I won it, it was exactly the way I wanted to win. It was a really cool experience. Um, it felt like it was the win that everybody got to win uh, with me. And that's how I want it to be. You know, I wanted to, uh, everyone's been following my journey and, you know, it's been every year getting close and not making it and close, not making it. And when I finally did, it was, everyone was in unison and agreement with that victory. So it was really cool to, to share that. And everyone knows like being, you know, winning in Canada is like one of the hardest things to do. Cause there's it's not like in the States. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. People don't realize in the States. yeah. We got two, we have well, one, we have one pro card to the overall, then like a second pro card to the potential next guy. And um, I won uh, the overall um, super heavyweight and um, obviously pro card, and I won uh, best poser, which is cool too. So, awesome. yeah, yeah. Awesome. And then what you guys had the only other way was North America. Yeah, so yeah, so we had North Americans too, and the um, the Arnold. So when I did it to um, the Arnold's, you got to qualify to get to the Arnold. So uh, when I I've been competing. Um, at pro qualifiers since I started basically at my first year. So I did the Arnold's twice and nationals every single year. Um, and then when they finally came with the Weeder Cup, um, the year before I won nationals, I did the Arnold's, I came third, and what did nationals came third, and then um, the Weeder Cup came second. And I did that all in the heavyweight class, and then my body was just like, we need to go up a class. And <laughs> we went up to super heavyweight, and then the next year we won. Well, it was great. Yeah. Did you, what, is there anything you did differently, bud, um, going into nationals that year, or was it just consistency, like over time, that finally paid off? Or? Um, for so long, I've been trying to stick in a class that I believe that you know I wasn't uh, meant to be in. Um, I started off as a super heavy in, 2000, in 2012, and instead of just growing into that class, I went down to heavyweight, and you know. Um, I have good genetics to be able to be bigger than that. So I kept growing and growing. And, uh, you know, um, it was getting harder and harder for me to make that weight until we finally decided, let's go into, you know, go up a class and let your body do what it can do. You know, a lot of people try to fight their body. You know, they want to be, they don't try to be in a certain class by making the weight when, you know, you should just let your body do what it can be, be as conditioned as you can. And the more you fall, that's the class you're in. So, um, I think the, that alone gave me a lot less stress um, competing uh, this year. So that was that's basically we, did. we had a better mindset, better game plan going in. Um, eating was was better, um, you know, cardio training. My body was just stress, stress free going into it. Plus, my mindset was like I had it. I was I was done doing this. If God willing, I do this. Hopefully, I can. Ho it was now I'm winning this year. And you know, it was not being being cocky. It's all being sure of yourself, seeing it, believing it and knowing that you can do it. So that whole, that alone helped me with, uh, that, was a, that was a difference of uh, this year, um, opposed to other years. Yeah. yeah. And then you have worked with Neil Hill, who I know he's a good guy. For yeah. How long have you worked with Neil? Go ahead and tell us a little bit about working with him and stuff. Um, Neil's, cool story with Neil. So um, I was working with another guy before, a really good friend of mine, really my best friend of mine, uh, Greg said actually. And, you know, I thought it was time to make a change. And um, I was just, I was, I was prepping actually for the um, Olympia amateur, it was supposed to be in Columbia, but they canceled it. So, you know, I was just sitting with my, uh, my girlfriend, my wife now, and uh, I had a posing video and I posted it on Instagram and I tagged Neil in it. And I was like, whatever, I just tagged him. And then he messaged me back and I was like, oh my, it's Neil, Jesus. So and, uh, he, we messaged each other back and, um, and then he took me on for that show in 2015 and I came second with him, it was very close second. It was my second time in the year, uh, second year in a row uh, coming second. And, um, you know, right after that, it was like, I got to meet him. I went down a week before nationals to train with him and Flex, that Project Flex, which is amazing. And we kept it rolling. And, um, you know, a lot of guys want to ditch their coaches too early when they don't know how your body works. And I was like, just stick it, just stick it out with them. Our relationship started off really good. He challenged me with training and, um, 
you know, just our relationship got stronger and we, you know, I got better and better and better. So if it's not broken, you know, don't fix it. So, you know, here we are now, 2017. I'm his first Canadian pro, which is cool. And, um, you know, we're going into 2018 and uh, my first year as a pro. And I'm excited for that. So, yeah. So what are, uh, speaking of your pro win and everything, but, uh, what are your plans for 2018? Well, the uh, cat's out of the bag. The big uh, announcement. Just joking. <laughs> Not that cool yet. No. Um, we're going to do the, uh, we're planning on doing the, uh, New York Pro Show, May 19th. Um, we're, that's the show we're aiming at right now. Um, you know, I want to do other shows, and we have those in mind, but the, the goal is to be our absolute best condition for the um, New York Pro, because everyone knows that's a huge show. There's going to be some big bangers there, and uh, I have to make myself, you know, i, I got to fit in the right way, not play the size game. The, the, the goal is to go in there to be as conditioned. I'm talking, like, my insides out, you know, walk anatomy chart. Um, that's the plan, and I have enough muscle, so I'm not worried about that at all. But uh, once that show's done and things go the way it goes, we're going to go do the um, Toronto Pro Show two weeks after that. And then um, pretty pretty sure we'll do the uh, Chicago Pro. But, you know, we always want to do, you know prepare for one show at a time and go from there, but that's the plan that we have, yeah. Just before getting your workout, boy, can you explain just a little bit about your past and um, how you came from a uh, sports uh, background with like football and stuff, just so people get an idea yeah. of how you got into training and stuff? Um, well, it's uh, I'm actually with my I came here with my uncle and uh, he actually got me into body like no, sorry not bodybuilding actually bought me some first bodybuilding show, and I have no clue even what bodybuilding was then. But um, I played football, and uh, he brought me to football to my football games. My my mom wouldn't she. She's a reverend. She'd be at church, and he was one to bring me the games and then introduce me to the gym. So I quickly found that being strong in the gym helped me be better on the field, and I immediately fell in love with the gym. So, um, you know, we uh, I trained my butt off for football, and uh, you know, I, I had high hopes, high prospects for you know American schools, and I was an all Canadian. I think it didn't go as planned. You know, I was a kid, and I didn't make the best decisions at all, and I lost uh, I lost a lot of scholarships. Um, uh, coming out of high school, so I spent a lot of my time trying to upgrade my courses so I can get, you know, keep chasing that dream of being a pro athlete, and uh, it just didn't work out. And then I finally got a second chance when I moved away. Um, I moved out west. I was sober instructing. I was, you know, partying. I was, you know, just trying to, you know, find myself. And then I jumped back on to. I knew there's a camp coming up, and I was like, let's do this camp and see where I can go because I need to get some structure in my life. And uh, a couple of the coaches that knew I was going to be there because I still had somewhat of a name and they remember me as being a good you know, football player. And the one coach that, uh, that I made it with, which was St. Mary's University in uh, Halifax, Nova Scotia, um, I got accepted. It was the only school I got accepted into. So I went from one coast, uh, you know, the one coast, the west coast, to the east coast and uh, played my years out there. Um, unfortunately, you know, when you... Uh, when you get a second chance, that window isn't as open as it was before. So um, the football dream kind of went to to an end when uh, I graduated. I didn't get drafted. Um, I was in the draft. Things didn't work out. And I just played the remainder of my years um, and uh, finished my degree, criminology and sociology. And uh, that last year, I was sitting on the bench with a broken finger. Um, <laughs> it was, and I'm like, what am I going to do next? So uh, there's some local bodybuilders. Santan Anderson was actually the one guy I messaged, and I'm like, when's this, when's this bodybuilding show going to happen? Because I need something to do. And uh, we basically you know, went to the show, and uh, I started prepping for that show right after I finished my um, season of football. And that's how I got into bodybuilding. So it's, it's been a five-year journey of, bod of football and university. Then at the fifth year um, of bodybuilding, I won my pro card. Really yeah. Quick for someone who didn't like bodybuilding, you're not like the average guy where I yeah. started at 12. You know, yeah. I mean, for five years, that's awesome. And yeah. when, what did you weigh that first show you did? My first show, I was, <laughs> my first show, I well, I finished playing football. I, I finished as a um, receiver, slot back. Um, when I started playing football, I was 217. When I finished playing football as a receiver, I was, I was like a slot back, um, running back. Um, and I was two, I was 198. And then I went back up to 216, and I competed at 216. I was, you know, first time competitor at 216, so it wasn't the hardest 216, so I probably could have been a light heavy. Um, and uh, that's what I weighed at my first show. And then to my last show, I weighed in at 232. Okay. Yeah, dry as a bone.
So we start off uh, mostly uh, back, all the back exercises, uh, back days that we train. Um, first of all, it's a lot of YFUT based um, exercises. So this week was more of a YFUT week two, which is around, around like, you know, 15 reps plus or 10, 15. So um, I like to start off doing pull ups first, just to pre exhaust. Pull ups, I like to pre exhaust. I think that's one of the best exercises to do. If you're looking for back width, and strength. There's nothing you you can't beat a pull up. So uh, we started with that. That's a pre exhaust exercise. I don't really even count that as the beginning of the workout. That's just the warm up. Uh, then we went into um, uh, wide grip lat pull downs. Uh, move the weight up. You know, get get a couple of warm up sets in there just to get the movement down, and then increase the weight. Always trying to make sure that you're um, controlling the weight. So yes, I do torque a couple, you know, some, some of the reps, but I still do make sure my eccentric or my negative is very controlled. So um, that's the most important thing with all my exercises that we control the weight and not just throwing weight, you know, throwing, moving the weight from point A to point B. Um, second exercise I went into was uh, my favorite, love doing dumbbell rows, love going heavy with those, again, controlling the weight. Um, I started off doing the first ones, we just did our regular traditional um, pulls. And then I went from a dead stop. So we would do 15 reps just regular. In my last set, we did dead stop 10 reps and then did five reps of just a continuous motion just to really exhaust the muscle of that. Um, following after that, we went to, um, I like the standing um, the vertical row, um, hammer stank machine. We don't have these machines too often uh, in, you know where I'm at. So when I get a chance to hit a hammer strength machine, I love, I gotta hit that machine. Um, that was more so for more of our upper trap area, um, trap lat, sorry, um, where if you could see my elbows are always held high and not pulling to the side. So we're hitting a little more, getting a little more stretch from the from the pull and better contract. So the range of motion is a lot, um, a lot greater, plus you're stretching at the top of the lift and you're hitting it more wide with your elbows at the top. Um, leaving there, went to uh, the hammer strength high pull, which is another awesome machine. Um, I like doing that machine and then decreasing the weight so you don't always have to have a bunch of weight on you know I like to go heavy at the beginning and then as the exercises go I like to lighten the load to, to focus a lot more on the squeeze because I'm not gonna be able to pull as much as I can at the beginning of the exercise so um, we did three sets um, uh, we did about uh, 15 reps again and then my last set we did a each rep was a pause so again I like to add in a little bit at the end to make sure we totally exhaust the muscle um, and from there we went to um, uh, hammer strength again uh, pullovers and that's an awesome exercise I like to do for your serratus and just really just finishing the muscle off um, good stretch to the top and good squeeze to the bottom um, everything is done without momentum you're pulling down and you're controlling the eccentric or the negative Did that machine feel good for you? love that machine yeah, yeah just and the machine's so good because you can feel because when you can't do the rep and you can see throughout the exercise when I do it, when you're done, you're done. You can't squeeze out another one. And if you're squeezing out a rep in those kind of machines, you're using other muscles that you don't need to, you know, incorporate in that in that uh, in exercise. So um, we did those three sets of those, gassed those right out. Um, felt really good. Uh, and then we did uh, hamstring bicep curls. There's a lot of hamstring machines here, and I don't get to use those often, so I love hitting those machines. And uh, this machine in particular is really good because it's, it's more of a, um, your body's in more position where you can actually just squeeze the muscle and you really can't put in your, you can't really use your shoulder. I find sometimes the preacher machines, they're put in a position where you can really kind of use your shoulder, move your shoulder forward when your shoulder is in a fixed position on this machine and you can really get a good squeeze on all parts of your bicep, the brachii and the brachialis. So um, really good machine as well and always, you know, controlling the muscles. So when you're doing tips of all these exercises, think of flexing through each exercise and not just moving the weight. So every exercise I do, I'm flexing through the, through the, through the movement and, um, and controlling the movement um, again. So did those three sets of those, burned those out, felt great. And then finished it off with uh, um, low pulley, um, almost like a hammer, um, hammer bicep curl with the rope which gives me a little more stretch from the bottom too and again if you see the way I'm holding it I'm holding my elbows a little bit in front of my body where they're not tucked close to me a lot of times when people have the weight when their elbows are tucked in close to their body they're using a lot of their shoulders and traps to help aid the exercise where when you have your you move your shoulder out a little bit and your elbows out you're getting constant tension on the bicep so you probably saw when I was doing it um, I would go until 
I couldn't go anymore. And I wouldn't try to force the weight up by momentum. I would flex through it. So when you saw it, I would be at my failing position or failing rep. It was failing from the muscle, not from my back and my in my traps and my shoulders. So again, um, Y3T is a very good, uh, uh, you know, um, philosophy and training where you're always constantly trying to exhaust the muscle through proper movement and not trying to muscle the weight up. So I found doing these, you know, following Y3T, you know, it's Neil Yoda's, uh, um, that's his program. It's unbelievable. And it's helped me, you know, gain a lot more muscle, um, size and just shape and all. So, yeah, um, I'd like to thank, first of all, my uncle, um, Clark here for bringing uh, me out here. It's an hour drive from uh, from Windsor, and, um, you know, it's really cool that I got to bring him here. He's the one who got me into this from the get-go, so um, this whole thing wouldn't have ever happened, really, if he'd ever brought me to the gym and showed me that those fundamentals from the get-go, and that's when I was, like, I think in the seventh grade, so I've been doing this for a long time. Um, other than that, uh, you know, thank you for, you know, we've been doing, trying to get this going for like four years now. So this finally happened, which is, you know, you know, let time happen and, and the timing is never, never better. Right. Yeah. So um, Nutribolics for, you know, being my main sponsor. For five years. Um, Grip Fit Audio, the headphones I was wearing, those guys are awesome with me. They're great headphones. So if you need headphones, go to Grip Fit Audio and use Johnny 10. Good discount. Awesome. <laughs> and um, my wife. She's at home right now. Um, I'm going to see her in about four days. Can't wait. I miss her. And, um, you know, uh, I'd like to thank, you know, the IFBB Pro League um, 100% um, in the CPA, the Canadian Physique uh, Alliance, and Ron Hash for just, you know, putting this out there and being able to give the athletes the chance to, you know, become professionals, have something to fight for. You know, without this sport, I would be still trying to chase something. Yeah. And I finally got it, and uh, I'm doing what I love. And uh, yeah, so I don't know who else I should thank. Um, Neil, I thank Neil. Thank my coach. Yeah. Um, my coach is awesome. Um, he's a f really good friend of mine, a good mentor, and uh, he's been there for me in some good times. And he's, you know, I'm here right now uh, as a pro because of his aid. So, uh, gotta thank him for sure. And thank God for giving me this awesome body and genetics. So yeah. <laughs>